advertising, it was impressed upon me the need to make everyone feel safe and comfortable in a public or a private meeting. Particularly, I was told it was very important to make women feel comfortable since they had to deal with the aggressive and sensitive behaviors sometimes exerted by the uh, masculine presence in the room. I have since come to realize that there are many vulnerable groups in the queer universe. We, queer, we queers rarely get a chance to be heard, and that's why Steam and On Our Backs put together this very event, because we knew that the Advocate and Out magazine would not be interested in the voice of queer America. Well, I'm about to introduce uh, two men who need to feel that safety in this room right now. Rich and Tom. Tom Reeves was the founder of NAMLA. They have a story that needs to be heard. I'm the queerest of the queer. At the age of 14, I was thrown down two flights of stairs by the entire football team in my high school because I was a fag. Tonight, I feel, during the first part of this program, I was thrown down those stairs again. I've been thrown down those stairs over and over and worse. I love boys, and boys love me. I ask you tonight, please don't leave. Some people already have been. Please hear us, give us the space we never have. Why are we attacking each other? Why are we attacking some people attacking transgender people of the most difficult situation? Why are we being attacked? I believe that like liberation, hatred is individual, indivisible. It comes from the same place, the same place as homophobia, erotophobia, racism, and all those hatreds I've seen. I see that same hatred, that same viciousness in the faces of those who scream at me. Throw me down those stairs now, for loving boys. We're here tonight to support lesbians, to support public sex, to support prostitution, to support gay men, to support transgender people, to support transsexuals, and drag queens, and SNL, because we believe in choice and freedom and liberation. We ask you, please, hear us out at least. Many of us come here tonight directly from prison, I mean directly. Some of us come here tonight from suicide attempts, from burnings and threats to be killed. Some of us in this room tonight must wear literally a scarlet letter from the state of Washington and other places. We come, there are 10,000 men in prison today for sex with boys, at least 10,000. Of those 10,000, 90% are there for consensual sex with boys over the age of 12. We're talking about youth and men together exploring ourselves, learning about sexuality, learning about consent. Yes, consent's important. Consent's important in politics and religion. It's no different than sex unless you are afraid of sex, unless sex somehow worries you. Tonight I ask you, please don't prejudge us at our sexuality based on what is said by the media, the government, the police, the psychiatrists, the social workers. Somehow I don't think they describe you very well. Please let us tell you who we are. Hello, my name is Richard Sturms, also known as Richie. I'm 25 years of age. I'm an antique dealer. My family lives in West Virginia, but I grew up in Baltimore. About the time I met Tom, I just turned 14, things were pretty hard in my life. I spent a lot of time on the streets, and I discovered sex very young. With both girls, boys, men, and women. I felt that sex was good, and I still love it. Tom, Tom is not the first man I went out with. Today I'm bisexual, but I identify as gay, and I'm happy about it. My girlfriend, some of my straight friends, Went last Sunday to Gay Pride in Baltimore, along with several of my past and present lovers, including Tom. I'm Tom Reeves. I teach history. I'm 55. My first lover was 14, and I was then 23. He is still my good friend. He's a prominent Canadian documentarian and writer. After 33 years of relationships, James Dubrow was here tonight, came down from Toronto to be here. And I thank him for that. 
I've had many other lovers from age 13, the youngest, to age 70, the oldest, but mostly teenagers. Many of my lovers have been my friends for life, and a few have lived with me for long periods. When I met Richie, I was also going through hard times. Because of my NAMLA activism, I was under very heavy political surveillance. The FBI spent $10 million trying to prove we'd done something illegal and didn't. I went through one trial, though. My home invaded by police, my belongings seized, my diaries taken and never returned. There were sensational and false headlines. Then about that time I met Richie. We had to be very careful. I just ran away from home. The cops were pressuring me to testify against a gay man I know. When they caught me trespassing with other kids on a parking lot, they told me I'd go to jail for a long time if I didn't cooperate. But did not cooperate to nail this gay guy. I did not want to hurt this guy. He was my friend. The day I met Tom, I told him about what happened to me, and he said he tried to help. Richie and I spent eight days circling Baltimore, staying in cheap motels, while I tried to arrange through a lawyer for him to turn himself in, but with an arrangement that they wouldn't force him to testify, and that he could go home instead of to a juvenile jail. We had a real adventure. It was a lot of fun, despite the worry about police. That's when I got the idea to have sex right on state lines. Well, on that trip alone, I think we hit about four. How many do we have now? 18. We did it on state borders, so we'd be breaking as many laws as possible. <laughs> I remember sex one time on top of a car in the woods, right in the middle of a deserted road on a state line. One night in the motel, I left you naked in the room while I went to the laundry with your only set of clothes. When I came back, you were gone. Scared shitless. I found you playing a video game in a nearby store wearing only a towel. We also had sex in a cave. It was a guided tour, but we managed to make out behind the stalactite. <laughs> Richie loved to get naked in the car. He could actually steer the car with his cock, no lie. It was amazingly big and strong, and still is, but. And it was curved just right so he could press it against the steering wheel. But when we did go back, it was a trap. The gay lawyer promised Richie could go back home, but when I dropped Richie off and he refused to testify, they sent him to one of Maryland's worst lockups for eight months. I thought Richie would never want to talk to me again, but he wrote me. They forbade us contact, but we used the name, he used the name, Tina, for me. So for the next year, I was Tina. <laughs> I knew the social workers, the cops, all of them really fucked me over. Mostly, mostly they didn't try to help me. They were, were on this crusade. Richie had some very hard knocks. Because of my own situation, I couldn't just bring him to Boston, as I'd done with other boys. Through it all, though, we kept seeing each other. And what a ball we, and what, and we had a ball. Remember in Florida, the night stand and a couple of, a couple of the other guys? We were speeding down the Florida turnpike. Everybody was naked except you. I shot a load and hit the ceiling, but some got your hair. I was in the back seat, so I reached up to kiss you. Just then, we saw the cop pulling us over. And he only gave us a speeding ticket. <laughs> we weren't speeding, but we didn't argue. Richie was never able to live with us, but he became part of a man-boy family. And it is a family, a real family. You, Michael, Paula, Clay, Donnie, Stan, Rob, and all of us. There are many such man-boy families in America, but we're living through a holocaust. It's an odd set of priorities that punishes mutual, loving touching more than it does an act of extreme violence. And there are hundreds of thousands of kids brutally beaten, terrorized, even murdered by their parents and other adults. But the media focuses on a blowjob. But we made it through all those hard times, and we still love each other. It was an adventure, and I don't regret one minute of it. Of course, all these stories about sex are just fantasies, you understand. We really waited until he turned 18. Sure, we did.